Hello friends, this is Callie. Thanks so much for joining me here on Ellen Hudson's YouTube channel for a fun interactive video using a light up mechanism. We're using Chippytronics today and this Lawn Fawn collaborative set using S'more the Merrier. All right, so I've stamped everything out that I want to use. I decided to stamp almost one of every image except for the rock because I need one to say push here for the light up element to work. So we are going to start out by coloring each and every little image here with Copic markers. I'm starting out with the darkest shade that I am choosing and using that to just add a little bit of color in each of those small little nooks and crannies at the bottom left hand or right hand corner of each image and then blending further with a medium shade and then finally with the lighter shade. So I'm going to do this with every little image, every little section of every image. So you'll see here that I also dot little blush for their cheeks and then continue to work forward from each image with those Copic markers in different shades of brown. It's a good thing those critters are cute because <laughs> coloring with browns aren't always very much fun. So I try to add a little bit of pops of color here on the graham crackers. I try to be a little bit too realistic with colors sometimes and um, so I stick with colors that I'm familiar with that I know the products come in and we all know graham crackers come in blue boxes. So anyway, I am going to move forward. There again, lots of brown shades, so I'm trying to mix it up by uh, using different shades of brown and different color families. So we've got this other pop of color with the moon in yellow, and then again, everything else in browns and grays. I wanted to give the marshmallows a little bit more color, so I went ahead and gave those a light hint of brown as well. And also, the one is toasting over the fire, so you can't expect that to be completely white. So here we've got the guitar. I guess I could have made that a different color, but in my mind, guitars are brown. And then on the rock here, I'm just adding different shades of gray. And then for these flames, I'm blending from red to yellow, but I'm starting from the yellow outermost flames first and going in. And finally, towards the end, I realized they're sitting around a campfire. They're going to have glow on their bodies. So I went ahead and went back in and added some orange and yellow glow to their body, just the forefront where it would be facing those flames. All right, so now we're going to start working on the background. I'm going to mask off two inches from the bottom using some post-it tape here. And then I'm going to ink blend with several different Distress Oxide ink colors. The yellow I'm using for the glow from the fire is Scattered Straw. And this blue color here is Salty Ocean. So when I change colors, I'm going to go back and forth and blend between the two from yellow and blue just to make sure there's a nice blend before I move on to the third color. This third color here is Blueprint Sketch. So I'm going to fill the entire panel with that, go back in with Salty Ocean, and then again with Blueprint Sketch just to make sure it all blends out nicely. Now finally in the end, I'm going to use Wilted Violet. I know it's purple, but when you blend over the blue, it just gives it a darker glow and it blends nicely between all of the different colors to create this night sky background. So when I'm done with that, I'm going to take that masking tape off or the post-it tape off and then just switch it so that I can blend the bottom. Once again, I'm going to use Scattered Straw to blend the glow from the flame. And then I'm going to go in with gathered twigs to go around the outer edge for our ground. I don't know about you, but with bonfires, you want to stay away from grass and all that. So when we have bonfires, we go out away from our house and um, start our bonfires on the dirt. So that's what I'm picturing, picturing in my mind. So that's how I'm ink blending this with these colors. And that section that I'm ink blending right now in the center is using tea dye ink. So again, I'm going back and forth between the tea dye, the scattered straw, and the gathered twigs just to get that nice blend for the ground. All right, so for the sky portion here, I am going to stamp some stars from the stamp set using Versamark ink. And there was a little swirly there for the smoke that I also stamped. And then once I embossed that, I decided to add a few more splatters for the night sky to emulate stars. And now for the ground, I'm using the darkest color that I ink blended with in Gather Twigs. I just smooshed it onto an acrylic block and added a few drops of water and splattered some of that for my ground. Okay guys, so at this point I'm feeling good, right? Because all of the things that take so long to do, like ink blending the background and Copic coloring is all done. 
I'm going to take all of my colored images that I've die cut and I'm going to lay out my card where I want everything to be. And I know I could have saved this part towards the end to do last once the mechanism is put together, but this is my first time using a light up element, so I went ahead and made the card the way I would normally make it. At this point, I'm going to start gluing everything down. So that's what I did. I started first by gluing down with liquid adhesive all the elements that I knew were going to be in the background, and then everything else that I wanted with more dimension I was going to add with foam adhesive. So I like to trim down my panel when I ink blend full panels like this because I like a crisp, clean edge. Right here, you guys, my daughter was talking to me and I accidentally snipped off the corner. <laughs> it's such a terrible mistake, but good thing we have corner chompers and I am making my first rounded card also. So we can thank my Lila for that. All right, so I have my card panel here on top of a piercing mat and I'm just gonna pierce a little hole through the center of my fire so I can turn that into the light up element for my card. So I'm taking that card front now and lining it up over a card base where I'm going to make my light up element. So I've drawn that dot there, that's where I want my light to be. So I've got the Chibitronics kit now and I'm gonna pull out a battery because that's one that I need, the copper coil, and also a light up element. There are three on here, so I'm just gonna peel one off when I'm ready for it. Now to draw myself a track and template and so that I can show you what I'm doing, I'm gonna draw a line above and below that dot, just about a quarter inch. We don't want them touching, but we also want the tracks to be um, above and below that light up element where um, the coils are. And you'll see that here in a little bit. Right now, I'm making a folder for the battery. It could have been a little bit bigger, but it works just fine. I'm gonna square it off fold it in half, and then I'm gonna make sure it fits right underneath that push here rock that I've stamped on the front panel, and then I'm gonna glue that folder down. Now I'm gonna use my pencil to mark my positives and negatives so that I don't mix up the two, and also for a visual aid for you. I also wanna give a shout out to Kelly Marie Alvarez because without her awesome tutorial, I would not have known how to do this. So thank you for that, Kelly Marie from Lawn Fawn. Um, she has a great tutorial and this is her collaboration after all, so I am doing what she would do. So, all right, so now we have this copper strip and it's got an adhesive backing, which is really nice. I'm just gonna line it up with the track that I drew. So you see that line there? I'm gonna fold it in the opposite direction and then fold down onto that line. Once we reach the end of our track, we're just going to trim it off with a pair of scissors. I'm going to start with the inside track of that positive fold. Work your way onto the outside of that folder. Again, fold up opposite of that line and then down onto that line. And then you want to do the same thing for that last corner. Now on that negative, I did start a little bit further out, but you don't need to do that. You only have one light up element and you just need to go right just past that dot. So after I line it up past that dot, I'm just gonna trim it by cutting it off. And then I'm gonna use a bone folder to burnish all of the coils down and make sure it's as low bulk as possible and to make sure that it's all adhered to the card base well and everything is in place. Now I'm gonna take my light up element, just one of them, and then I'm gonna line it up over that dot, making sure that the coils are touching each other. And just for another security measure, I've cut little strips and placed them over the top and bottoms, again, to make sure not only that the coils continue, but also that they are touching. And then I'm gonna put that battery in. You can tell on the battery which side is the positive. So once that works, of course, it makes you super relieved, right? So I am so happy that that worked and I didn't have to redo anything. Right now, I am rolling up my foam tape to get a triple layer of foam so that I can adhere my card front to that card base where the mechanism is. The three layers of foam will be higher than that battery, making sure that mechanism will work and doesn't always stay on. So if you don't have enough foam tape or, or enough height between that mechanism um, in that space, then your folder is always gonna be touching the battery and it's always gonna be lit up. So you wanna make sure there's plenty of space so that when the card panel is placed over that card base, that push here button will actually be functional. To give my images a little bit more interest, I did add some white gel highlights. 
Then off camera, I embossed my sentiment, cut them down into strips before adhering them to my card. And that finishes my card today. It's super fun to have this light up element and my daughter was completely enamored by it. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for stopping by and thanks Ellen Hudson for having me as a guest today. Have a wonderful day and take care. Bye.